a good one. Okay, let's try one more. Are we coming a little tighter on the page then? Um, try, to, try to do your panel. Okay, go ahead. When he's more, like, very animated when he paints, you can almost see through the corner of your eye. Some broader strokes? Face draw and then with this brush. Okay, you have enough to watch. Yeah, that's good. Everything he does works just right on camera. Let me just get his face. I just have to get the rhythm. Yeah. We have both of the, the detail and the big thing. So, so it's still it is. Okay. Bernard, can you boom it? Yes. Sure can. 
Don't worry, it's always darkest before it gets pitch black. It's okay. early, Steve. Okay, well, now you said you had, now can you uh, talk Gustav right into that? Oh, picture? right into this, yeah. Let's wait for that This is one of the quietest days to work anyway, right? Is that true? Is that hospital in the city? No. Yeah, when I gave it to the lead, last month, yeah. I'll give you that piece of paper there. I was giving you the lecture, you know, when the truck passes by and the cars that are parked, uh, it sets off the uh, alarm on the car, you know, the burglar alarm. Who's this busing? That's Marlon Brando. Hey, Hall's story, yeah. All right, well, start out, though, tell us how many years you've been here when you came here, and tell it right into here. Well, when I came uh, to America? To America and then to Carnegie Hall. Oh. Well, I was born in Austria, in a small town, a farm, farming town. That's how I got to like horses and all other animals and the turbulence of nature and all that. And I came here when I was 13. I was brought here. We lived in Chicago, and I came to New York as a soldier for, for, for the Air Force. And, uh, and, uh, I was, I, I'm a great music lover, and especially Beethoven. So, uh, uh, soldiers used to be let in free in, into Carnegie Hall. You know, they didn't have to pay. Except one time, uh, this was, I think it was 1953. No, no, sorry, it was, 1953 was something else. This was 1944. There was a war bond drive concert, and each seat was a thousand dollars. And uh, of course, the, some of the soldiers waited, uh, and I waited. I was a sergeant at the time, and they told us not to wait this time because nobody can get in because this is a special concert. And, 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 and we all waited for about two hours, and finally uh, the loudspeaker kept saying, please leave, you cannot get in. And I stood there, and, and everybody left except about 50 people, soldiers, that, that is. And for some reason or other, I concentrated. I said, somehow I got to hear this concert. It was Toscanini playing Beethoven's Fifth, Tchaikovsky's sixth and Beethoven's ninth, all in one. And just about two minutes before the concert started, a very elegant uh, gentleman in a tuxedo, he, he wormed his way through the crowd and he grabbed me by the, sh by the shoulder and he said, come on, soldier. So, he, so his date didn't show up from Philadelphia. So I got to hear the concert. Isn't that a great story? <laughs> and Tuscanini happens to be my, my uh, musical god, Beethoven and, and Tuscanini. Well, could you tell us now how you got to Carnegie Hall to this studio? Oh, how I came here? Uh, well, I mean, how, how, much of, how, how much do you want me to tell? Your own pace, however, you, you mean whatever's interesting, yeah, whatever's interesting about it. Whatever is interesting, yeah. yeah. Well, I had marital problems at the time, and I lived in one of those posh east side uh, Sutton Place apartments. I didn't want to be there in the first place, and I had so much trouble that a friend of mine who used to take voice lessons here. He said, why don't you get out of this mess and uh, let the storm rage over there and get yourself a studio in Carnegie Hall. So he found a, a studio for me in Carnegie Hall. And that was in 1951, and I've been here ever since. Uh, well, it's the best move I ever made. This is the greatest studio in the I happen to have the greatest studio in the world, I think, and it's as good as any place in Paris or any other place. It's, the light is great. And, and uh, well, and I'm here uh, uh, very quietly turning out masterpieces that nobody knows about. And then people who have seen my work, they say, well, why isn't this man a millionaire? Well, because normally if you're a good artist, you don't know how to sell yourself. 
Tell a little bit, what, what's it like having a studio in Carnegie? And what, what's the flavor of it like? Do you see other people in the hallways? Do you hear music? I mean, how does, what does it No, you, you know you don't hear music. You have to go to the concert hall to, to hear music. What's it like being here? Well, I would say uh, you're in your ivory tower, and it's the greatest place in the world. Uh, you don't hear noises. It's quiet. And, of course, people are friendly, what few people you see. And, of course, I, know I'm, I normally stay in my studio and, 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 and uh, go crazy uh, in my quiet way, turning out masterpieces, loud, <laughs> turbulent. Uh, well, come on, help me uh, out. No, that's real good. Um, what about, uh, you told us there are a couple of other stories, like uh, Brando, you said, who are some of the people? Tell us about some of the great people over the years that you've been here who've also either worked in this hall or... Well, Brando, uh, Brando, uh, he, he, he was here for three and a half years, studying and, and for other reasons. And uh, he and a group of his, they were playing the bongo drums all night long, so I never got any sleep for about three and a half years. And people used to, uh, since there are two entrances here, the young girls used to uh, wait for him in one entrance, then he'd sneak out the other entrance, and they, ne they never did catch up with him. And then uh, at the time, I, I, I used to be offended because I, I, I was just as important as he was. <laughs> He made a lot more money, and, and they wouldn't even look at me. While at the time I was, uh, well, I was a Greek god like he is. <laughs> uh, any other names that come to mind? Uh, didn't Bernstein live here for a while? And did, were there any that you had any Well, you mean down, well, and the, the, they used to have the Carnegie ha Tavern downstairs, which is now defunct, uh, but at the time, well, let's see, Wh whom did I meet down there? G Gene Tunney. Oh, yes, I did, I did the, the long count fight of Dunny, Tunney and Dempsey. Uh, 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 so he was, the, I met him down there. I met Ginger Rogers, Ann Harding, Mrs. Roosevelt. Uh, well, and, and so many actors, uh, Mel Allen at the time, who, who was the, the, the uh, commentator for the Yankees. Did you have um, time since you love music so much? Do you, can you tell us about some of the times that you'd like go into the hall itself? Did you have to go through the main gate? Did you know how to get into the hall? Could you well, sneak in? Or? Can I just mention something else and then ask me again? Okay. Oh, yes. And the stage delegatessen, uh, I eat there a lot. So when, when President Carter was uh, in town to, to promote his re-election at the time, and I usually charge in there like a madman in, in the morning, you know. And uh, so they said, Mr. Rayberger, you can't come in this time. You have to sit over here. So I sat over there, and I started eating. And all of a sudden, everybody got up. I didn't know why I had to sit there. So in comes Rosalind first, and she went over to one side, shook hands, and President Carter came right over to me and shook hands. So I got to shake hands with the president at the time. Uh, but, uh, all right, music. Uh, you asked me about music? Yeah, did you hear a lot of famous concerts? Of the oh, you know, that milestones in musical history took place in that hall. W tell us when you were there, what you heard. Did you have to sneak in? Could you, you know, there are some ways. Well, uh, you, you mean I can tell? Yeah, go ahead. All right. I used to sneak in all the time. Uh, I mean, they would let me in because they knew I, I, I lived here. And uh, one time, the, the Russians were here, the Russian uh, Moscow Symphony, whatever it was called. And I think it was Kontrashian. I'm not sure if it was he or not. And they were also doing Beethoven's Ninth Symphony. So I wanted to hear the Ninth. So the people that knew me, they said, Mr. Rayberger, not this time, out. Nobody gets in because they had so much security that no, nobody could get in for nothing. So I let it go at that. So 
so during the intermission, before the Ninth Symphony came on, uh, I then snuck in, and they said, wait a minute, uh, who are you? So I said, I'm part of the chorus. So, so I got in. It's amazing, isn't it? So I heard the Ninth. Are there any uh, things that stand out about, you know, we went through 20 minutes. Okay, I think that, let's, let's cut here. I think that's fine. I think what, what you said was good about turning out masterpieces. It's, it's very true. Uh -huh.